Did you know that the federal government has arbitrarily disarmed over 250,000 veterans using the NICS background check system? Hey guys, I'm Phil, and on this episode of the Minuteman Moment, I'm going to brief you on the work that Gun Owners of America has done to protect the rights of veterans and show you how you can help us fight back. Comment down below if you remember our very first episode of the Minuteman Moment, where we also highlighted our work against the VA gun ban. This issue just keeps coming up, and what the antis do to veterans, they want to do to the rest of us. So it's important for all gun owners to be active on these issues. In fact, just last week, the Biden administration abused the issue of veteran suicide to promote gun control. And ever since the National Instant Criminal Background Check System, or NICS, was created, anti-gun states and federal agencies began looking for ways to include more people into the system. And the Clinton administration directed its bureaucrats to look for the names and records of anyone who could possibly fit into one of the prohibited person's categories. Most agencies, like commerce or agriculture, don't even have any real criminal records. But some anti-gunner over at the VA had a horrible idea. Why don't we take the names of 83,000 veterans who used a fiduciary, he said, to handle their VA benefits and ban them from having guns? So basically, they took the prohibited person's category list in federal law, which bans firearm ownership for anyone who's been adjudicated as a mental defective or who has been committed to a mental institution, and applied it to veterans who have fiduciaries. But federal law doesn't require the VA to do this, but they did it anyway. If you're confused, don't worry, because you're not alone. There are currently 250,000 veteran records that are included in the NICS system, and they don't belong there. Anyone, including a veteran, who utilizes a fiduciary to handle their daily finances is not subject to a federal gun ban. But if a bureaucrat appoints a fiduciary to handle only the veteran's VA benefits, the federal government treats that as an adjudication as a mental defective. So GOA has fought this thing from the beginning. The next attack on these veterans was the Nix Improvement Amendments Act of 2007, or what GOA referred to as the Veterans Disarmament Act. You can think of this as the first fixed Nix bill. But Schumer and Pelosi played cat and mouse with GOA for years while we blocked the passage of this bill. It would never have passed until GOP leadership struck a deal and let Pelosi and Schumer pass it without any recorded votes. So you don't know who supported it and who didn't. The act essentially helped the VA codify what they were already doing, using bureaucratic determinations about a veteran's finances to treat them as if they were legally adjudicated as a mental defective or committed to a mental institution. And ever since, Gun Owners of America has been fighting for the passage of the Veterans Second Amendment Protection Act, which actually passed the House of Representatives in 2017. The bill wouldn't allow bureaucrats to make decisions about veterans' gun rights, just as Congress had originally intended, but the bill stalled in the Senate. But despite that, GOA hasn't given up. During the entire Trump administration, GOA fought to have the VA change the process from within. The VA doesn't have to treat fiduciary appointments like adjudications as mental defectives. They can just do a quick rule change, like the ATF likes to do all the time. Except this time, they can restore gun rights. GOA teamed up with the veteran service organization, the Independence Fund, and made a formal petition to the VA to initiate a rule change. We even got 21 pro-gun congressmen to back our petition for rulemaking and write to President Trump, saying, Gun Owners of America and the Independence Fund recently filed a rulemaking petition asking the VA secretary to restore veterans' gun rights. We urge you to take this long overdue action to respect the right of veterans to keep and bear arms. And of course, Congressman Chip Roy teamed up with the now retired sponsor of the original Veterans Second Amendment Protection Act to demand Trump take action too. But tragically, that wasn't enough. An executive order undoing the gun ban reached the president's desk, but didn't get signed before January 20th, 2021. And the Biden administration? isn't gonna sign it. But that doesn't mean that gun owners should let this momentum go to waste because pro-gun representatives need to hear from you often on this issue. You need to remind them that they must fix this mistake when they get into office, especially the next president who gets elected on a pro-2A platform. 